everybody! Welcome to One Take Book Reviews, where I talk about a book, such as this lovely book, um, without any editing because my computer is broken. Sorry if you've heard this intro a couple of times, but for those who are watching these for the first time, I just thought you would want to know why there's no editing involved. So, today we are talking about this book, In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. Woo! So this book uh, is pretty incredible. Let me start out with kind of what it's about. So, and yes, I do use notes. I don't really think that's cheating. I just think it's being prepared. So, um, this book is about the murders of four people or the Clutter family, um, husband, wife, and their two kids. Um, and it takes a look at the two murderers, uh, Perry Smith and I think Dick Hickok, Dick Hickok, which is like the worst, most difficult name to say. Um, and how the story goes is it has a very nice slow build um probably 50 pages maybe 70 pages um where you get some background if you hear some weird noises by the way the cats are fighting in case you're curious so anyway um you get a little bit of background of the clutters you get to meet everyone you get to kind of explore their personalities and honestly you just get attached you know what's coming but basically truman capote allows you um, to see into the lives of these four people before they're killed in cold blood. Very accurate title. Would you guys settle down? I'm busy. So, let's see. So basically, um, I'm going to talk about some spoilers at the end, but I will let you know when that happens. So not quite yet. Um, the way this book is structured is so, like I said, you have the intro where you see the family. Um, they get killed and you get kind of walked through uh, the aftermath of the scene because you're following I think one of the townspeople as he sees these people who were his friends um, and what happened to them and if you are uneasy with murders um, I still think you can handle this book but there was um, that part when he goes through what happened to them so skip ahead if you don't want to hear but basically Mr. Clutter um, his throat was cut he was shot in the head his son was tied up, shot in the head, and the wife and daughter were both, I think, shot in the back of the head or something, tied up and shot. And it was just, this the way Truman Capote set up that particular scene was like incredible. Because you're kind of lulled into this very like, oh, here's a description of this family. Uh, you don't really think that there's gonna be a fairly graphic description of like, you know, these people who are murdered and then suddenly boom, it happens and Capote shifts into this really intense description of what happened to them, which I thought was really cool. I just elaborated on that for like way too long, but I really liked it. Um, so then after the murders, um, you follow some of the investigators, some of the townspeople, just for a really short amount of time. Um, sort of the aftermath, how everybody in the town feels, how they're all suspicious of each other, and how the investigators are completely stumped because the only clue is a footprint, um, I think a footprint of dust or in, in blood or something like that on, in the basement, which is hardly anything to go off of. So you follow as they figure out who did it. Um, Dick and Perry obviously did it. And what I thought was really cool is how Truman Capote sort of fictionalized, but like in a realistic way, conversations that Dick and Perry had with each other um, during, before, during, and after the murders. Um, it follows their escape and, well, escape, I mean, I guess them just running away. And it follows how their relationship worked, which I thought was really cool because they are not, you know, no one's just a cold-blooded killer and that's the only thing that they are. These people, um, have lives and histories and relationships with other people and actually explores Perry's and Dick's relationships with their parents, siblings, and other people before they get arrested. And I thought that was probably the coolest part. I think that part of the book was probably like the middle third, um, which, and it seems like it's boring and it seems like it would stretch on for too long, but I love the, you know, in the mind of a murderer kind of a stuff kind of a stuff, kind of a thing. Oh yeah, the other thing I forgot to tell you is I will make some verbal mistakes because there is no editing during this. Um, the point being, I think the pacing of this book was incredible. Nothing was too long or too short. Um, I thought it was great. So I just spent a really long time talking about that. Um, another point, um, so they catch them, they go through the trial. 
I'm not a big fan of the legal proceedings part of anything. Gatsby, don't jump up there. No. <laughs> He's going to jump up and knock my camera down. Um, I'm also reading still The Executioner's Song by Norman Mailer, which is about this big. And it's a very similar story. It's about murderer, the pre-murder, murders, trial, execution, spoilers, of Gary Gilmore. Uh, which I think is a fascinating story. Really cool, but like way, way too much on the trial. I just, like, that's not my point of interest. So I thought the trial in this book, this book, was nice, concise, etc. So that was really good. Okay, let's move on. So some of the more interesting points before we move into the spoilers. Um, I think, so Dick Hickok, Dick Hickok, <laughs> it's actually his name, um, He's the really full of like bluster. He's very like bold. He's very outspoken and he's very like on the tough guy kind of a deal. Perry Smith is, was, um, short in stature. He has deformed legs. He's much more quiet and he honestly is more relatable. Um, and I will talk about why that is absolutely terrifying in the spoilers part. Um, and what is very interesting in this book how Capote captured the change in personality that both of them go through, or the changes, because um, Dick goes from this like kind of bold, obnoxious character to like a coward, a complete coward by the end of the book. He is, he would sell his own mother if he could get out of his situation. Perry has this very quiet demeanor. He's very not that intimidating at all. And he proves to be the one that you actually need to watch out for because of some things that I will go into. I don't want to spoil it for you. Then he, oh, so all of this is real. I mean, all these people are real. So it's kind of hard to say, oh, spoilers when this happened like 50 years ago, 56 years ago now. Um, anyway, so what else was I going to talk about? Um, oh, this book also covers the confessions. So it covers, um, uh, when they caught them, when they took them into the interrogation room, and what each Dick and Perry say, like in real life, what actually happened, what transpired in those rooms, and I thought that was incredible. Because movies, shows, books, you know, they seem to, they have this build up to the crime, and then they catch the people, and then boom, it's over, like happily ever after. But this really covers a lot of the moral questions and ethical questions. I mean, it's not really that moral and ethical, ethically questionable. I mean, these people murdered four people, but it gets me I'm busy. This cat, I swear to God, <laughs> he's being so annoying. But I'm taking too long to get to my point. Um, the point is, it, this book does a really good job of like sucking you in, making you feel for everybody. And I mean everybody in this book, at least a little bit. So here's the spoilers part. Okay, so as I kind of covered, um, it's it's the murder of four people. Um, I think how they were murdered was crazy. When Perry is telling one of the invest one of the FBI investigators exactly what happened, I had to read it like three times because Perry's saying, um, you know, Dick's the one who walked into the house, and you know they were there because they wanted money that was in a safe that actually wasn't even in the house. So it was crazy because these murders happened because. Dick and Perry wanted to steal like $10,000 that wasn't even there. And Dick wanted to, you know, they got there and they didn't see the money. He was like, no, we're going to make this worth it. And Perry was like, no, I think we should just leave, leave now before we're in even more trouble. And so they have all the clutters tied up in their house. And then there's a conversation between Dick and Perry. And Dick said, or and Perry says like, okay, are we going to do this? And Dick's just kind of like, you could see that he's kind of starting to get a little freaked out because killing them is clearly the next step and Perry's like okay we're gonna do this and Perry says that he just felt this like incredible frustration and rage basically not rage but like this very cold feeling come over him and before he even knew it he had slit Mr. Clutter's throat like he did it and he didn't even completely cut through so and he like emotionlessly hands the knife to Dick and he's like, do it. You need to finish this. So I thought that was like, whew, that was incredible. Just how it was written and how it was real is real. I mean, that just, ugh, 
It's so good. I, I think this this book is amazing. I think I actually gave it five stars on Goodreads, which is weird. I usually don't give five stars on Goodreads. Um, I think that is about everything. Um, I also thought it was really interesting. I didn't know this. Um, so obviously Dick and Perry are executed at the end of this book, um, like intentionally by the state of Kansas. Kansas? Yeah, I think it was Kansas. Um, what I didn't know about hangings, apparently, you know, they're, they're the noose is put around, uh, they drop, they, their neck snaps, but it takes them 20 minutes to die, like to be declared officially dead. I didn't know that. I don't know why, that just seemed very horrifying to me. I, I mean, I guess like they're not aware of it and they don't give them, they didn't give them any drugs, no sedatives or anything, because that was actually discussed in the book. Okay, I have spent a very long time talking about this book at this point. I have had a really good time reading this over the summer. It took me way too long, way too long to read this. Um, highly recommend, highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, please go read this. <laughs> um, probably my favorite book so far, actually. Okay, well, that is the end of this 11-ish uh, minute video. Um, if you liked it, feel free to give me a thumbs up. Um, that would be nice. If you didn't like it, feel free to not do that then. Um, and I will see you in my next video, which is probably going to be another one take book review because I'm reading some more exciting things. So stay tuned for that. I hope you have great days and weeks and stuff. Okay, bye. Sorry, my bye is weird. Okay, we're just gonna go now.